Welcome to episode 119 of Star Wars and Scotch. It's not Kevin this time. It's me. Kevin's dead. Uh, he's no longer here. So I'm. it's my show now. <laughs> no, Kevin's here. He's Hi. all right. He's alive. Hi, Kevin. It'd be really funny if I was just, you just did a whole solo show and I just laid there like that. You just sat there and just listened? Just like, no, like that is like. Oh, I didn't see that part. That'd be really good. Oh, yeah, I was just dead the whole time. Maybe for Halloween, we'll do that. <laughs> I like Tim that. We'll just good. do a solo episode, and I'll be dead the entire You're time. You're just dead. Yeah. Cosplay. What if we had you, like, dressed up as, like, burnt Anakin? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, you just burnt Anakin. Did you ever get your sure. Mandalorian costume, by the way? Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that one out. Oh, God. Yeah. I was going to say, if, if you're not going to be Mando this year... I, I want to be the end. he said he they, I emailed the guy and they said they're working on it, so we'll see. I could be uh Burnt Anakin and you could be Obi-Wan. Hello there. And we'll just bring a rock or something and you could just stand on the rock when we go to you know, wherever we gotta go. I don't know. The high ground. Did you hear they're naming a mountain after you and McGregor in Scotland? And what are they gonna call it? Uh, it's either McGregor or Kenobi. I can't remember. Oh, dude, if it's like Mount Kenobi, that'd Scott be awesome. You and Mc... Unless it was some sort of fake news that I saw, but let's see. We'd have to put you on like a gurney or something if we were going to roll you around. So we'd have to like cover your legs. Like a little, like a little, re- little wagon. Oh, this is probably fake because it's from ifunny.co. Oh, God damn it! What is that, like the comedic version of The Onion? Probably. Scotland's tallest mountain to be renamed Kenobi in honor of Ewan McGregor. And then I think that's fun. I think that would be really, yeah, I don't know, that sounds clever. They love him there. That sounds like good old Scottish humor. You know his brother's call sign because he's in the Royal Air Force is OB2? Mm-hmm, because he, he's OB1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, cute. that's neat, right? Yeah. It's really good. What are you sipping um, on this morning, Tim? I'm sipping on Aztec. I had to think of what I put in in the uh, coffee machine. Aztec. It's like it's my favorite go to. Like it's just it's just a good, well rounded morning coffee. So like it just you can't go wrong with Aztec. Low acidity. That's the best part for older men like me. You know, guys who are forty, right, Tim? Oh my! 40. Oh my God! Okay, all right. So guys, <laughs> there's this TikTok floating around. And it's this guy who he's he's older. He's probably like if if I if you could if you were to ask me how old is this guy, I'd be like, oh, he's probably like in his mid forties, like early fifties. So he's forty. Come to find out, he's forty. But he's got like he's got the Friar Tuck kind of haircut going, like the the uh, he's got like the curly hair kind of go around the sides. Like if this I I I told Kevin like if this guy was to shave his head and put on you know a couple pounds of muscle, he'd look a lot younger. But like this guy's kind of he's dressed like a university professor. Like he just looks like a nice guy. But Kevin can't get over the fact that that guy is 40 and that he is also 40. He's like mm-hmm. this guy and myself, we do not look the same. One comment salvaged it for me. Someone said that guy is 1980s 40. Cuz the other guy in the video is like probably more like me and it says you are 2020 is 40. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that were like were stitching and they're like, I'm 40 and there's no way. And they're still wearing like their Rugrats t shirt from 1993 and they still have like their like Blink 182 hat on. So like these guys have not let go of their their childhood. Whereas this gentleman is a little more refined and he's just kind of accepted his age. Kevin. Are you saying I should just accept my age? I'm just saying that you're kind of rebellious. I've always been rebellious. I know, and that's why you and him don't get along. Rebellions are built on hope, Tim. I'm still I'm glad you still have an ounce of hope, Kevin. So anyway, kingscoastcoffee.com. <laughs> it was so dark. I'm glad you just let that go. <laughs> Perfect. Kingscoastcoffee.com. I'm actually drinking um we had my uh soon to be born niece's baby shower over the weekend, and the party favors were uh King's Coast. All I heard was my soon to be born. I was like, "What? No, What's I'm done being that born? I'm I know, but I, I I totally forgot there was a baby shower. So I was just like, "What? Yeah, no, my soon to be born needs this baby shower. So I'm drinking the uh, coffee from that, which it's just Aztec. Um, actually, no, it's Trevor May. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, it's delicious and wonderful. Kingscoastcoffee.com. We're almost at the end of the month, and Wayne said he had something special planned for you all, so make sure you're following on socials, part of the King's Club, on the newsletter, all that fun stuff. Kingscoastcoffee.com. We are... What if- six months away from gcx less than oh crap gcx event.com slash tickets this is this Why year you is- have to say it like that because i i count down daily <laughs> oh. uh but uh this year as, as of last week holy shit that's the best way i can say this this year is shaping up to be amazing um very reminiscent of what we we experienced in 2019 with all sorts of fun stuff. Um, you know, I, 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 I'll give you this chat and this is not a promise that this will happen at the event, but I met a vendor yesterday that is basically able to help us offer AR experiences to our vendors for you to experience. So I'm adding it into our sales pitch when it comes to GCX. So, um, you know, Tim think, uh, halo when we went to the halo event. Oh yeah, that was sick. Yeah, so you'll be able to do AR uh, experiences with your phone and whatnot. Um, so gcxevent.com slash tickets. And uh, yeah, it should be, uh, it's going to be a good time. I promise you this year is going to be real, 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 real good. Uh, how was your week? Um, it's been okay, Kevin. Um, you know, video the video game world is very dull at the moment. Um, yes. There's not a lot of like new um, that doesn't get you canceled. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, good, for, for good caveat there. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so, there's not a lot of new things that you can play that doesn't get you canceled uh, or the threat of there. Um, but, yeah. I mean, like, overall, you know, it's just kind of just waiting, you know, just kind of like as far as the streaming stuff goes, it's been, been all right there. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like there's like it's just like it's the same like honest, honestly the past like couple of weeks have been very like much so just like status quo. It's like just just doing that. Amy's well uh, I guess the newest thing that happened to us is for Lab 77, which is the little merch company that Amy and I started to make merch for myself. Um we got the new printer in which I've been like talking about for the longest time. So the printer is going to allow us to do like shirts and shit. So I'm super excited for that, but it's high quality. It's not going to be like high quality. Like it's not going to be like just the direct to garment printer that just kind of just shoots ink on it. It's going to be be nice. I've been working with Tim for five or six years now, and I can tell you that Tim and quality go together like peanut butter and jelly or thanks, Kevin. Chocolate and marshmallow and graham cracker is whatever your poison is. Tim is not someone to cheap out. So if you are uh, buying something from lab, you know, it's going to be a uh, good quality. So I look what about forward you? to 429 oh yeah it should uh, be a good day the baby shower and then um uh super bowl was on sunday uh we did some drinking on monday we did we did some drinking we filmed the uh, some the scotch part of star wars and scotch on monday so stay tuned for that um we we tim and i were a little tipsy leaving the office that was a, that was a fun way to start the week i have i have most of it <laughs> over there now that was good that was fun So closer to GCX, you'll notice if you see the way the bottles are laid out now, when we get to like July, I want you to look again because some of those will be missing. God, Um, Kevin's going to have a binger in the office. That's how I got through 2021, dude. I drank a bottle of Jack that weekend. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) A bottle of Jack. Hey, what we got to do sometimes is event Uh organizers. It's fun because I meet other event organizers now and... um, uh, you know, I met one, I won't say what event it is, but I was talking to him and he was like, yeah, sometimes I just lay under my desk and cry. And I was like, I, I, I know how you feel. Uh, I know how you feel. So GCX, no, GCX can be good this year. It's a great team, uh, working with your friend, Matt, who has just been already out of the gate is like, wow. So, uh, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. All right. Let's talk about bad batch. Let's talk about it. You want to talk about today's episode first, and then we'll go back to what <sighs> we have to catch up on last week. So yeah, you end on a good note here. Yeah, let's knock the filler out of the park. Go for it. I'm gonna let you have at it, dude. What was the fucking point of this episode? <laughs> other than other than Omega is sad, and I feel that, and I understand. Like, I mean, they've really been 
I've been hitting that hard. Like the family's broken apart. Echo left. Like, so she's sad. I get it. Okay. So what was the point? It advances Echo's um, story a bit and obviously her emotions. The biggest takeaway for me was the relationship between Echo and Tech. Yeah, but is, never... it necess- but is it necessary from a storytelling point? Necessary, no. Filling in blanks along the way with, an ep- you know, it's a 16-episode season. I think it's okay to, to tell some side story. And this was a to be continued, so we don't know how this part of the... Well, it's to be continued because end. they've been left on the planet. They don't have a ship. Right. The Marauders so, gone. yeah. yeah but so... that, that's part of it, too, is Echo didn't have a home. The Marauder was her home, and now her home is gone. Or not sorry, Echo, um, Omega. I mean, Omega, yeah. Omega's home is gone. Echo is gone. Well, he'll come back, obviously. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be like an Echo, Rex, Crosshair. Everyone gets back together and either fights out or hugs it out. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if Crosshair is going to join the gang again, but we'll definitely see him I don't again know. soon. We'll see. I just, I don't know. I was kind of kind of let down by this episode. It was, it, you know... It wasn't, I don't even know, I don't even, did they say the planet they were on? I didn't even catch no, that. No, the did. only the only part that Wrecker just goes, I hate this planet. <laughs> like, that was it. Oh, I loved, I loved the Lion King scene. Yeah, that was definitely a throwback. It was literally Lion King. Lion King. Yeah. I was waiting for uh, someone to say, uh, what does Scar say when he throws him off? Long live the king. The king. Yeah, something along those lines, but. Obviously, there was no uh, antagonist there to move that along. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I watched the episode, and I was like, the only thing I can pull from this is Omega's emotional journey and the relationship with Tech. That was it. That's the only That's the only part that was of any significance, and that was at the tail end of the episode anyways, where, like, Tech is explaining how he processes through his emotions. Like, that's, like, like from a real-world application, like, that was nice because it's all about, like, hey, we all process shit differently. And instead of, like, just it all being one way of, like, why aren't you angry with me? And, like, I like I, like I can understand it from, like, from her point of view. Like, she's really upset. And she's, like, she's upset that no one's upset with her. And I get that deep. I hate it when I'm, like, upset about something and no one's upset with me about it. I but at the same that- time, like, she needs to understand that, you know, it's a family and everybody else is processing their emotions their own ways. I think they were learning to, they were learning how each other's emotions work because yeah. tech is factual, straight line. I'm just going to tell you how it is because that's how his brain works. Mm-hmm. And then Omega is, you know, essentially she's still a child to an extent. So she's not dealing with what the change and everything. She thought, like, this is my forever family. They're always going to be around, blah, blah, blah. The Marauder's my home. And then two things have been, major things have been taken from her. So she's not dealing with that. So I think they're learning to coexist in an environment where they have to make concessions for the way the other person feels and acts. That was my takeaway from it. So that was it. That's all I got. I don't have anything else for that one. Yeah, I mean, like, the caves were cool. Episode eight, however. Yeah, that was really good. Told you. Like it was good. I mean, like honest so I will say the like I was I was, you know, kind of vibing with the episode up until the very end. Then I was hooked. Like as soon as Palpatine shows up at the end, I was like, Yes! Yes. I was like, Oh, His- homeboy's playing 4D chess again. Oh yeah, dude. He planned this from the get go. He needed all of those pieces to fall into the right place for him to move this bill along. And I love how no matter what, he was going to win. Like, it was so good. It was just fantastic. I loved everything about it. I love how Rampart just gets fucking framed for everything. Uh, it's funny, because a few weeks ago, we were like, oh, man, maybe he'll be a steady villain. And it's like, nope, you got palpatine No, he no. <laughs> Rampart's out of here. He's going to go to jail. Um, and I, I wonder, I wonder, though, is this going to be Rampart's, like, rebel arc, where he's just like, fuck the Empire. They screwed me. You know, time to go work with the rebellion. Either that, or we never see him again. Yeah, or he's dead. Yeah, but so. yeah, for the entire from the for the entire genocide of a planet uh, to be put on Rampart, I was pretty. It's pretty solid. Palpatine once again, no matter how the cards played out, he won. Yep, once it was again, really, it was well done. It was really, really good. As soon as the as soon as the floor opened up, I was like, ooh. 
Well, I I had a feeling he was going to show up because his his I don't know what that guy's called the Tagruda the blue one that's with him all the time. Yeah, uh, I can't think of his name. But uh, yes. he has a name and, and a title, and I can't remember what it is. Um, like so it, it once I saw him in the first in episode seven, I was like, mm, we may see Palps by the end of this, um, because he's always next to him when they're in the Senate chamber and they do the you know, mm-hmm. uh, but. It was just again. I was like, "Damn!" Even if, even if Rampart got his way, Palpatine won. The other way, Palpatine won. He just and that the other thing too is with him is is no one is safe from his will. No one, because he will take his own men and be like, "Yeah, you are the cause of these problems." But here is the solution, which is exactly the same solution as the cause. <laughs> And everyone's yep. like, okay, that sounds good. Yeah, we can ride with that. Scary yeah. looking man in the black hood that definitely doesn't look evil. Uh-huh. I like how everyone was against it. And then immediately they're just like, yeah, no, we agree with you. Of course we need this thing. So it was, not, it was well done. Not our uh, our uh, friend Bail Organa. He knew. Uh, yeah, no, he knew. And even like um, uh, Chuchi, like, I mean, like they, they all like, they all knew. Um, but of course the rest of the Senate is just a bunch of sheeple. So she almost felt used from what I was gathering. Yeah, it did. It did feel that way, didn't it? Yeah. Uh. So no, it was. Uh, it was. It was. Again, it was a good episode. It was a fantastic I episode. I really enjoyed it. But you know, I was just like, man, that, I wish we had more of those. But that can't be every episode of the Bad Batch because you have to appreciate it when you get to it. That's the thing with animated Clone Wars was the same way. If you remember correctly, you'd go yes, like I six, remember. seven episodes, and then you'd have the the three or four that were like, oh my gosh. And then you go back to the filler. So it's just the same formula. Uh, yeah. I would say Rebels was the only one that had more frequent oh, man. moments. Very much. There was a lot more concise storytelling within. Like, like the gang went from thing to thing and it all made sense as to like why they were doing it. Right. Um, whereas this one's like the gang, the gang goes and does a side job for you know for one person and then goes and does a job for another person, and then they kind of like Rebels fall into that- it. Rebels did have that because I remember during the Bendu oh, episodes, yeah. there were so many filler episodes in that time frame. I'm like, get to the point of what the hell this neutral force being is doing with Ezra and and Kanan. I was like almost getting frustrated because it was taking so long for them to get to the resolution there. Um, you know, Rebels too gets kind of masked because when you get to like the Mandalorian episodes with Sabine, you're by that point, you're just so enthralled that like any yeah. of the shit episodes you just forgot about. Cause you're like, Oh my God, Mandalorians. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think so. also just like, I've gotten so used to like the hour long runs and yeah. like having more content. I think like the 20, like the 26 minutes, like, like little short episodes, like that would work. Like if it was still like on TV, I guess, you know, like if you're looking for like, you know, ad breaks and things like that, but it's just like, it still is just, it feels slow. And I think that's I think that's my problem is like I have a hard time just enjoying just like just the content for the content. And I'm looking for I'm looking for the story. I'm looking for like all of like the little things, whereas I'm just not I guess not really just enjoying the visuals for for it. But I guess it's just also from like a content perspective, like for us, like I'm like, oh, man, I would love to have things to talk about and to, you know, to 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 expand upon um, to theory craft, and so it's just like there's nothing really like these episodes like really give right now, outside of just like the it's the fun little adventure. So like I I have a hard time with Bad Batch. I'm, I'm like I feel like I had more fun with season one than I've had so far with season two. But even season one had like had low points as well. So we um in, in not next week but the week after you'll have plenty to watch. So. Yeah, I'm curious to see how that's gonna how that's all gonna fan out as far as like how do, how do you watch all this? Could you imagine? I know this is not happening, and I'm not saying it in a way that it's gonna happen. I'm just being a fan. Could you imagine some sort of crossover in the story? I know they're in two different time periods. I'm not saying that either, but somehow, some way, like we get live action bad action. <laughs> It would be so old. They would be. They'd be as old as they would be. Well, so old. Is their their aging is the same as regular clones? Even yeah, they're they're the yeah. I would assume so. I mean, like they're they're also like some of the originals, right? So Omega would would be the one that we could see if anything. 
That could be plausible. But I would see her more in Book of Boba Fett. But Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett are also like uh, this. Yeah, but I don't. I still don't know what that has to do with like them out in Man. Unless it's going to be like the whole like it's going to take like two episodes or three episodes for them to build up before they go to Mandalorian. So maybe the only the only thing I could see because there will be filler episodes in Mandalorian. There oh, almost definitely there always is. The only thing I could see is some link back to that facility on um, what's Grief's planet, the one that they start on. Oh, crap. That had the Imperial base that they raided. It's on the tip of my tongue. I, I, uh, uh, I'll look it up while I'm saying this. But remember that facility had those things in those pods, and you and I were going back and forth about what it could yeah. be. We thought it uh -huh. might be early Snoke stuff. That could be the only link in the show that I could see linking back to shit you're right we still have a, we still have a lot of that like dr pershing and stuff because like we see him in the trailer he's in and he's on coruscant oh that's gonna be really i wonder if we actually get to go into the cloning stuff more and like with like grogu because they said grogu's navarro they said that grogu's gonna be a bigger part to this season so yeah, i we, wonder if the whole cloning and m count and all that stuff is gonna be heavier this time around because yeah. there's a lot left there that we like that was like that was heavy in the beginning and then they didn't really touch on it anymore. And then the Bad Batch ends up with going to that cloning facility that where Luke's hand supposed to be. Right. So, so there could be some correlation through all of that. We know we know there's some sort of emphasis on cloning over the past few years with the Disney storytelling. We do not know what it is. We still right. have not gotten to the point of it. Like we know cloning plays some sort of role. Obviously, we can link it back to Snoke being a failed clone. You know, the Bad Batch is a great example, decommissioning of the clones. But why is Dr. Pershing in the future so important? Could Grogu right. be a clone? Like, we don't, like, we don't know. He could be a yeah. Yoda clone for all we know. Um, so it, it, there's a lot to unpack there. And on that note, um, I don't remember where we got this from. Paul, if you could cite it, that'd be great. I can pop it in there. Uh, but Grogu to be more involved than ever. There will be things in season three that once again have people talking about Grogu in incremental ways. He's growing as a character and in this partnership with Mando. As this relationship grows, Grogu has to become more central in things that are going on. So instead of our cute little sidekick who occasionally uses the force to save dad's ass, yeah. um, he's going to be more central in the storytelling aspect, which we started to see in Book of Boba Fett anyway. We saw that start to come about. So. Um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Also, the trailer you're all raving about, it's all the same footage we've seen. It's just recycled. And yeah, I mean, like, people were talking about how they could, like, see, like, his, his like, best car, like, chain mail that was, like, underneath his his robe. So people are like, oh, my gosh, like, he's going to be the first ever, Je he's going to be the second ever Jedi Mandalorian and, like, all these things. Because, like, they, they really think, like, that from what I've seen and what I've, like, I've heard people say, like, they really think that, Mando, like during the season, Mando is going to be training him in the ways of being a Mandalorian. And so, like, I wonder, I wonder if, like, that whole remember that remember the um the 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 art that was done of Grogu like grown up and he's like in like best yep. car with his helmet off and he's levitating and he's like yep making the ball spin. Like, I wonder if that's going to come to fruition. I wonder if that's the direction they really want to go with Grogu. Is like he's this this hybrid. He'd be the, uh, I forget which Vizsla it is, that wields the Darksaber or forges the Darksaber originally. But essentially, yeah, so they'd yeah, make him the, the second thing. ever Jedi Mandalorian. Uh, I'm going to look at it. Is it, which Mandalorian was a Jedi? Tar Vizsla. So, yeah, I mean, that could be where we're headed. It would yeah. take time, though, because of Grogu's aging. That's the only thing that I could see causing a problem. Like, you're talking... Oh, no, I'm not saying, like, the end of season three, like, that's where it would be. I'm saying, like, the end goal for Grogu, whatever they do with this character, wherever we end up with him, I feel like that's going to be his. So if if the rumors are true about, you know, continuing Ray's story post-episode nine, that no. is the only place I could see Grogu fitting in based on the way he ages. I thought they said they were going to leave it alone. They said no more Skywalker saga. They're not going to fucking leave it alone. Leave it alone. If you learn anything, we don't get what we want. We get what they give us. I just, I don't want any more Skywalker stuff. That's what Damon Lindelof's movie is in, is post-episode nine. Yeah, but we don't know how far post-episode nine. 
Are you you're pinning your hope on it being that Visions episode that you love so much? I really <laughs> want it to be the Ninth Jedi so badly because it's such a great time period. This idea of going so far into the future you've forgotten your past it's so awesome and it's a great way to just like just say fuck it to everything else that's happened because you don't remember. It's all oh, it's man. all it's all lore at that point. It's all just stories and and fictional adaptations you know it's just like it's i think it's a great idea i'm not saying it's not a great idea i'm just saying i don't think that's what's what's gonna happen so i'm just setting your expectations i swear to god if we pick up episode 10 on tatooine i'm gonna throw something with ray's music and she's just walking yeah and it's just it's literally like the ending of episode 9 and episode 10 starts with luke and leia's force ghost just standing there son of a bitch (laughs) <laughs> we shall see but yeah i there's the idea that grogu is going to mature into that by the end of the mandalorian it's just it doesn't add up also the rumors are mandalorian is not going past season five anyway which i think is a good thing i feel like that's the sweet spot for most shows five seasons five ish like uh battlestar galactica was four game of thrones overstayed their welcome past seven yeah, but I mean, like, it didn't really get good until, like, season... Well, season three. one was really good. Season two sucked ass. Season three was decent. Yeah, I would say it, it got goes, good it up until... It goes steadily up from season three. Season six is amazing. Yeah, and then after that, it kind of starts to suck again, so... Season seven's still good, but it, you can start to see the decline happen. And then season mm-hmm. eight, you're just like, ah. like... There's a fucking Starbucks cup in the shot. What are you doing? Yeah, and season eight, too, the thing is, is, like, there's some good storytelling in it. Like, Sansa's story in season eight is so good. Yeah, but it's just overshadowed by all the garbage. Kind of like episode eight with Finn and Rose. Oh my god, <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, forced. I mean, it's it, yeah, I would say like five ish somewhere in that range is, is a sweet spot. So, um, you know, wrap that story up and move on to the next live action thing. We're all for that. I don't need you telling 20 seasons of Mandalorian story. You could tell other Mandalorian stories, but Din's story can be. You know, we'll close the book and move on. Where's Pedro? Give me that, Pedro. Uh, that Grogu coat was from uh, um, director uh, Rick Famuyiwa. So uh, I trust him because he di- he directed some of uh, the best Mandalorian episodes. The heist. He did the heist episode, which is one of my Oh, favorites. Rick. He's the one that always wears the baseball cap. He's yeah, awesome. Yeah, the Dodgers I cap. Like, yep. Yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, he's but. good. He's good. Um, cool. We're going to take a quick break. We're going to pay some bills. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay tuned for more Star Wars and Scotch. And we're back. Uh, Dave Filoni reveals how Clone Wars helped Mandalorian writing process. Find this interesting. Go Go on. I think things can continue on and your adventure continues every day. I used to think about Clone I used to think about it with Clone Wars all the time. When is that battle over? When is that struggle over? Because it culminates in Revenge of the Sith. But that can't be the ending for that show. Even though that's the ending of that era that took a while to figure out and he's right when you're telling an evergreen story that takes place over millennia just because you close the chapter doesn't mean the book is closed right. i agree with that yeah middle Fair. earth does it narnia did it they're doing it with westeros now um all the world marvel marvel does it dimension wise which is cool they like every other story is like here let me face the camera every other story is like this side to side or um a timeline marvel goes sideways dc does the same thing where they tell you the same story the same eras same characters different experiences different people different things so um which uh um, dc seems to be doing in that flash movie that they probably shouldn't be releasing that they decided to drop a trailer of during the super bowl and i'm like oh god yeah i was like i thought we were done with the oh okay i thought I guess we not. were yeah i thought we were not gonna do the ezra miller thing yeah but uh, here uh, we are i mean Seeing Michael cool Keaton as Batman, seeing he Michael Keaton, he, he would look great. And if you look closely at the Batman costumes, I mean, as a Batman fan, you could probably crank one out seeing what costumes are sitting in that room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, you see the tumbler from from Christian Bale's in the trailer. So it's like. Okay. It's supposed to, this is supposed to fix the DCU like it's supposed to fix it all. So, yeah, well, it's, it's Ezra Miller. Supposedly, though, um, the Flash from the CW is in it. I don't know his name. Wait, Jordan? What? 
Jordan? Is that his name? Wasn't Jordan Fisher in The Flash? No, no, the, the guy who plays The Flash is in this too. The one on the CW show? Yeah, it wasn't... Jordan wasn't Fisher wasn't The Flash, though. Who he is was he made... in... Who was he in... He was on the show, I know that. He wasn't The Flash. Oh, he wasn't The Flash? Who was he then? Unless he was in that... Um... Oh, he was Bart Allen. He was Impulse. Ah, okay. Mm, got it. Sorry, this this shows Jordan and I didn't watch your show. Sorry. I know, honestly, I I've never watched The Flash show on don't, CW. The I only, don't care. I don't, the only, it's on the CW. I don't watch CW. The only CW DC show that I watched, because all the other ones I tried to watch, I was like, oh, my God, I can't do this, was Arrow. Arrow was fantastic. I heard Arrow was amazing. Arrow was fantastic. It's also because Steve Stephen Amnell is a huge nerd. So, you know, when, it's like Cavill when they throw themselves oh, yeah, into he the just role. Eats, yeah, he just eats the role up. Yeah, so uh, I still think he should be Green Arrow uh, in in James Gunn's universe, but that's a selfish thing. Anyway, back to Dave Filoni. So, yeah, when you're telling the stories, you know, you can't just, like, end it there. You have to move forward with what's happening next. And you have to take that into consideration, too, especially when you're telling a story out of order, which seems to be the new, I don't want to say the new hotness, but it seems to be the way stories are told now. Are it. Yeah. Well, I think it's because... A good story is told within a certain timeline, and then it's like, all right, we can build on this world mm -hmm. and flesh it out further. That's if you look at Lord of the Rings, that's how The Hobbit was made. He wrote yeah. that story as a bedtime story for his son. And the ring had there was no malicious ring; it was just a ring that gave Bilbo invisibility. And then all of a sudden, the ring became the central force behind all of the evil, and it cascaded. Yeah, it's from turning there. it into a platform and not just these ancillary stories exactly exactly and we see it in gaming we're, we're seeing more and more games move to the platform method rather than you know to the Glass biggest of mishaps to the biggest mistakes in gaming in my opinion was destiny 2 and division 2 Ooh, trying to reinvent the wheel yeah when you should have just built a platform i think wow is the perfect example of building a platform that game's how old now almost 20 yeah. 20 uh -huh. years i think it's 18 years and um it's 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 a platform and they've improved the graphics and they've done all this stuff over time so yep um uh like the last so, of us is like they they're gonna they're gonna do the, for the next one it's just gonna be this big open world multiplayer game but it's within yeah. the last of us universe which is pretty sick you got I mean, like it makes part sense. one and part two and then you've built up all the stuff around it and then you just throw your your fan base into an open world let them tell their own stories and no spoilers because I know a bunch of you are playing it now because you you watch the show and you're like, okay, I need to experience this. First of all, welcome to the trauma. You'll never, ever be able to escape it. It'll haunt you for the rest of your life. But it is one of the best stories that's ever been told. Second, there's nowhere to go after Last of Us 2. <laughs> the no, story's I mean, like, over. You, okay. Well, I don't know, dude. Okay. Can we spoil, Can we talk about this for a second? Like, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, well, I'm going to give him give like a second to mute it. Okay, so the way that Ellie like just walks off at the end, like you could totally tell, like that's where it picks up. Like, you have to finish Ellie's story, and it ends Ow. with her. It ends with her dying. She dies so you, at the end. You just want to go further down the depression hole with Ellie. Yeah, really you got. Just... You have to. You watch Joel get his head beaten in. You have to watch Ellie die, and right, then and who I'll... picks and and then you know who picks up the mantle? It's gonna be her. It's gonna be the 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 white the girlfriend and the and the daughter. I was going to say the girlfriend, like, can't they just live happily ever after? But they do without Ellie because Ellie's the problem. Ellie has Ellie. The problem is, is Ellie's gone through so much trauma is that she yearns for it now. And so she's at this point mentally where she's lost everyone that she loves. Like no one's there. So what does she have left? All she has is this anger and this sense for revenge. So do let you, her have it. You want to play another game where you're Ellie and probably another character like they did. Which would be utter somehow it would be more depressing than one and two because at least mm -hmm. one has a happy has, ending. And it has two, to be a very dark tone. Two was like one, one was a happy ending. Two was like two was traumatic as fuck throughout the entire game. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. just the beginning. And then you thought you were done and they threw you back into it. No, yeah, they were like, hey, have fun. Uh, so you want to do this again and have Ellie die at the end. And it sounds like simply for closure, that's all you're getting. You're not that's getting that's all, but that's what you need. They have to round this out. 
You can't just the let her just walk off into the Layla? sunset. Is that the white the girlfriend's name? Layla? I don't remember. It's been a bit. Uh Ellie's girlfriend. Last of Us. Dina. 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 The only way I'm okay with that is if Ellie dies and it's Dina somewhere very safe with the child playing and no That's what harm I'm saying. will come to them. Because that when I watched Hawkeye, I told you this. When I watched Hawkeye, the whole time I sat there and I go, I swear to God. Clint needs yeah. to go home and stay home, and that's you want the last him to have time a I ever want to see him. That's it. I don't uh -huh. ever want to see him again, ever, uh -huh. ever. He had a happy ending, and that's I'm done. I don't want to see Hawkeye. Let Kate take up the mantle, and she can be the new Avenger, and we'll mm -hmm. move on with our lives. I swear to God, if I see Clint outside of a cameo, like saying hello, what's up, everything's great, and my family's happy, I will be pissed because I got my closure. If they do mm -hmm. that and they kill Ellie, and I get to see Dina and the kid, okay, I would do it again. But aside from that. I don't want to like, I don't, it, I don't want to do that it. I could see it is like she finds a letter like at the end she would find a letter from Ellie and it would be like this apology letter and at the very end it's all about how she loves her and like it was the best thing that ever happened to her like all that stuff and like that's how the game ends. That's I, how I, I would do, do that. it. If I, I was the producer it. on The Last of Us Part 3, that's how I would end it. Neil Druckmann, if you're listening, you're probably not. There you go. Tim and I will work on the game if you'd like us to. Yeah, oh I've got this whole thing cooked up in my head. But but I don't think they're gonna do it. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna let it lie, because it seems like they're very invested in they're because they said they're they're not doing another Uncharted and they're not sure if they're gonna do a part three. They're like if the time's right and like we feel motivated by a story, we'll do it. But it seems like they're all in on this open world game. But Uncharted also had the perfect ending. Uncharted Four had an amazing ending. So it like, had one I of agree. The best I wouldn't touch endings. it. I I got like so emotional at that ending because as as a dad, I was just like, oh my god, like. Yes, move, what's cool. And if they want to, Tim, in 10 years, she can be the new treasure hunter and she can take over and she can be the star of the game if they mm -hmm. want to. If not, cool. They lived happily mm -hmm. ever after and they're going on adventures in my head anyway. So that's it. Like, I don't want just Ellie to die. I need Dina and the child to be okay to go into that world and do that again because I'm completely fucked in the head from that game. Those games. <laughs> the only game i got off stream and had to drink scotch at three in the afternoon because i needed to settle down my nerves because i was just on 11. holy shit yeah i got off i was on mixer i'll never forget i walked in my wife's like sees me walk by and then she's like how was stream i was like ah oh, you know and then she hears a glass clink she's like what are you, are you okay <laughs> and she sees me walking outside i'm like i just need to sit outside for about be fine i need this <laughs> so um yeah, I don't even. We got on that from the amazing writing in Last of Us. Um, Dave also said, I think that in some ways you want each season to have a feeling of an ending, but in a lot of what I've done, I don't like hard endings. Yes, I have learned that about Dave Filoni never, never completely shuts the door. Look at the Book of Boba Fett. He always leaves it open a crack just in case. And I think that's actually good writing. It is good writing, 100%, because it allows, it allows for two things it allows your audience to continue the story in their head that allows them to build fan fiction and all that stuff. Cause if you have a hard close and you're like, okay, this is how it ends. It doesn't allow them to expand and, and build out any content. Right. Two, it allows them to create more content around those things. So it's like, it's, it's self-serving and it's also, it's really great for fan service as well. Right. Like Obi-Wan, like we know how Obi-Wan dies, but the end of Obi-Wan, the show like allows you to wonder, okay, what do him and Qui-Gon do? But it also allows them to, if they want to, tell more stories with Obi-Wan and his learnings with Qui-Gon and more. So like, I'm glad they didn't just hard cut that. Yeah, I mean, they had to walk us to the front door and either they'll continue to tell the story so he can teach it to Yoda or we know what happens in our head anyway. So the story doesn't need to be told, but yeah, maybe they'll bring it back and they'll tell it. Maybe, honestly, Tim, maybe they're waiting for you and to get a little bit older to keep telling the story. Maybe. You know? I mean, like, yeah. And then like Book of Boba Fett, the way that it ends, I mean, it's it's Boba Fett and his gang of Power Rangers just hanging out. Like, they could get into so much more mischief. I agree. I, I just didn't like the Power Rangers. I wasn't. I love the Power Rangers in their 1950 scooters. It was fantastic. Oh, it felt so awkward. <laughs> felt out of place. And they went I so slow. <laughs> I did like the modding tattoo guy. I was like, oh, that'd be me in the Star Wars universe. I would just be half machine. Mm -hmm. That was yeah. cool.
The one guy had the he, cyborg guy. I mean, like it was. I mean, it was cool, but I mean, like yeah, it was out of place. But it was fun. It fit for Boba Fett. Yeah, I, I I'm again. I I think people gave Boba Fett undue hate. That wasn't necessary. Um, you know. Do, and, do I, you know who also gave uh, a, a Star Wars shows a lot of hate? Uh, the the now Andor fans. I just hi hey. I know it's you. I know you love Andor now. We were telling you that from the beginning. The amount of people that lately, Kevin, that have come in and chat, they're like, hey, I watched Mando or I watched Andor all the way through and it's great. I'm like, what did we, thank you. What did we, we say? That from the beginning. What did we say? We said people would catch up eventually. They'd watch it over Christmas vacation. They'd watch it when they got time. You know, you got to remember, too, on top of all of that, how inundated with shows we there are. Is so much point. shit. Uh -huh. Because the, the people that grew up like us, that are nerds, are now making the shows that we want to see. That's the thing. Like, Last of Us is a live-action television show. is not something I thought I'd ever see. It's so very good. exciting to watch oh it my God, and so experience good. the trauma all over again in a, in a different way. <laughs> yeah, and, and I the best part for me is is watching my wife experience the trauma. It's like, ah, oh, you didn't get to do it the first time. Now you get to do it with me this time around. Like the, like the whole brothers thing. I forgot about that until they got to a specific part when they got to the motel. And I went, oh, I forgot about this part. <laughs> and Amy goes, what? I'm like, don't worry about it. My wife, my wife watched it, the first episode with me. She wants to watch more now. I'm like, I don't know why you hate zombies. She did this with Walking Dead too. And she decided to tag along for the journey and then would complain about Oh, it's so, so scary. I'm like, what do you what do you expect? So she's she's along for this journey and we're watching the beginning. And um she's like, wait, is that Ellie? I'm like, she's like, are you saying she's gonna <laughs> and she goes, How? And I go, mm. <laughs> I was like, they might change it, they might make me relive the horror all over again. I'm not sure how Neil Druckmann's running this show. And lo and behold, right. I was like, ah, we decided to do it almost like, exactly like it. Like That's a cookie person. cutter. <laughs> uh, she was like, that was dark. I was like, oh, sweetheart, that is nothing for this story. <laughs> yep. You don't even know. So, yeah, I, I really like the way he writes. And I think, um, you know, like we said, even if it goes to season five, he's going to leave the door open to see Din again in other adventures or, or whatever it may be. I don't think he'd go back and do a season six, but I do think he would always say like, yeah, Din might be back. Obviously, Grogu will be used again because Grogu is not going to be a one off character. There's no way in hell. The amount of merchandise that little green oh thing sells. Oh my god, he moves Woo! so much, dude. Like, I mean, hello, hi. Look how cute this coffee mug is. Oh, it's so cute. So Isn't cute. Adorable. Like, I mean, between things? between our families alone, Tim and I probably have close to a thousand dollars. Oh, I have so much Grogu, Grogu paraphernalia in my house just because Kyler loves it. I'm like, yeah, that's cute. Of course, why not? I the amount of Star Wars stuff, dude. Like Kyler has these five minute Star Wars stories. He knows where Luke Skywalker's planet is. He knows what it's called. He knows that it's called Octo. How many people know where Luke Skywalker lives? Very many, but my three-year-old does. As he reads the books. As he reads the books. Mm -hmm. Have you finished I mean, Jedi? Just lightsabers. I have six hundred and seven dollars worth of lightsabers sitting in my house. So, yay, Star Wars! Did you so finish Jedi? Was... Oh yeah, I finished it like two weeks ago. We'll have to talk about it next week. Did you finish it? No. All I have right, like so I have like three. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta finish it. I'm just saying. Like, finish. I'll finish it this week. So good though, so good. My favorite like moment it. is still the wedding though, in all of the I Republic. The wedding. Is oh, it's just, so good, dude! I want to see that in live action so badly oh, with the music. It's so good. yes. Um. So this story sucked, but had a happy ending. So obviously Peter Mayhew passed a few years ago. Now I think, um, original actor who played Chewbacca. Yeah. Um. So uh, I'll, I'll read this, then we can discuss it. Health problems prevented Peter Mayhew from retrieving uh, his uh, Star Wars memorabilia from his attic when he moved. So the house's new owners took custody of the possessions. Sure. Time passed and the abandoned merchandise was recently put up for auction. That's when the late actor's wife, Angie Mayhew, got word of the potential sale and tweeted her dismay that the items were to be sold. The auctioneer, Ang Ang so keep in mind, the story paused there. There was a point where that was all we knew was like that his everything he collected as, as Chewbacca's actor was being sold. 
and the family wasn't getting anything from it. The foundation wasn't getting anything from oh, it. Oh wow! These people were benefiting from it. Yeah. So there was a point when this was all we knew. The auctioneer Angus Ashworth stepped in after finding out uh, finding out, out about Angie's tweet, and he worked things out with the owners, who were glad to give the items back to the nonprofit, the Peter Mayhew Foundation. The monetary value of this lot is fairly modest, but knowing how much it means to the foundation and given that it had been in the attic for over 24 years, wow! the vendors are quite happy to donate it to the foundation and have permanently uh, within their personal collection, not for profit so that fans can access it in perpetuity. Oh, so the place it's going will, the fans will still have access to it and the money that it was used to purchase it goes to the Peter Mayhew Foundation. So, That's so awesome. Yeah. What seemed to be a story. I know Mark Hamill got involved um, and what seemed to be a story that was like, oh, and it probably knowing the power of the internet and how crazy Star Wars fans are, they wouldn't have been able to sell it and like get away with it anyway. Yeah. So I'm glad everyone did the right thing because, you know, the bad press and all that stuff would have buried you. In the ground definitely. Anyway. And honestly, like you said, it's it's a it's a it's a modest amount. So it probably what a couple hundred thousand bucks, maybe. But still, it's 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 good that it ended up in the right place. Right, and it benefited the foundation, which was important to his family. So, another happy ending. Uh, we that's we've a nice read the feel Campbell good story. Wednesday story. Yeah, yeah, you that's can nice. go into your week now knowing that there are still good people out there doing good things, and and uh, uh, I'm uh, again Star Wars community. I like hearing stories like this. Good people, yeah. the actors are good. So, I mean, like we we got a good thing going here. Don't don't screw it up by yelling at them and getting upset and stuff. Like everybody chill and stop. Yeah, be stop, nice. Stop, stop with the Kathleen Kennedy's getting fired videos. It's been three or four years now and she's still not fired. Can we just wait until she gets like retired? She's just gonna and retire. And then we can have a we can have a retirement party for her. She's been there since, she's been there since the eighties or nineties. Like, chill out. She's not going anywhere. No, but that's what I'm saying. Like we can like once once Dave takes her her job. Do you think Dave wants her job though? Because then Dave has to do Willow and Indiana Jones stuff. Oh. Probably not. I think Dave just wants to work on Star Wars. I think so too. He's just a big Star Wars. Well, he's just like he's a nerd. Right. He just wants to do nerdy stuff. Have you watched Willow? Is it any good? I have one episode left. All right. It is Disney's attempt at getting into the fantasy hype. Mm -hmm. It continues the feeling of Lucas trying to have a fantasy counterpart to Star Wars that mimics the levity, but also the seriousness of Star Wars. So it does take that into consideration. Let's see. The fan service, if you like, if you went and watched Willow the movie and then you watch the series, you'll pick up on more of the fan service and it makes it a bit more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Some of the characters are horribly written oh. um, or horribly acted. I haven't figured out which one it is yet, but others are good. It is great to see. Um, God, I forgot his name. The actor that plays Willow. Good God. I know you're talking about, though. No, I need to know his name. Warwick Davis. He's R2-D2 as well. It's great to see him. He does a great job. Um, they like to try and surprise you sometimes, but they also love the throwbacks. They also do it the way that Lucas did it, where the costumes and the props are practical, just like the old Willow to keep in continuity. That's nice. I mean, so here's my final say on it. It's like a 6 out of 10, and it's worth a watch if you're into fantasy stuff. That's That would be it. I'm going to pass on it. The one thing they do that pisses me off is they're trying to be, you know how Game of Thrones would end an episode and like it would be like a mo more modern song than like a fantasy? Yes. They do that sometimes during an episode. Oh. And it, it couldn't be more out of place. Yeah, that's it's weird. It couldn't be more out of place and it just completely kills your immersion in that moment. Okay. So that is one of the, the whole, that's probably the worst part about the show is they do that. It's only like once per episode, but it's still like, like why why are you doing this so um yeah it's my two cents yeah well if dave would have to do willow stuff he'd probably say now indiana jones is gonna be over after this after this movie so unless they pass the mantle that would be the only way it would be. <sighs> maybe but i mean like they um did you see like the de-aging stuff they did on on harrison ford yeah looks awesome 
looks people are amazing. doing it on TikTok now and I saw and it. It's and terrifying. Yeah. How easy it's crazy. It is. Yeah, it's crazy. It's just like as long as you have enough, you know, video evidence of you in the past or pictures and stuff, like you can de age yourself. It's just, just insane. Yeah. Crazy. The future's wild, man. Well, we'll see. I did you yeah. and you sent me the the Kendrick Lamar voice one. That one was terrifying too. Oh yeah, that was pretty creepy, man. Yeah, the next couple of years is gonna be wild. Well, that's why. I mean, that's why. Uh, you know, for Darth Vader, why they're just gonna just gonna synthesize his voice for everything else now. Yeah, you don't really need to do anything else. So wild. The future's okay. here, Kevin. Yeah, I know it's a little scary, but I wonder what Star Wars movies are gonna be like in like five to ten years. It's gonna be nuts. You know, we're not getting any movies in five. To ten. <laughs> there's there's hope, Kevin. There's always hope. Well, thank you so much for watching and listening to episode 119 of Star Wars and Scotch. We got one more episode with no Mandalorian, and then Tim and I are in, yes. in so, so much close. Mando. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you're just gonna be drowning in Mando and Bad Batch oh. in two weeks. Exciting, drowning, drowning. Uh, make up. sure you go. Check out King's Coast Coffee, kingscoastcoffee.com. Get those GCX tickets. I'm not lying when I say this is going to be a good year. GCXevent.com slash tickets. Make sure you go check out Tim, fb.gg slash darkness429. He's darkness429 everywhere on the internet. He streams Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. ish Eastern. Uh, you can go in and and just uh, uh, and enjoy his, his, his lovely, lovely community who I just love to get them riled up every day. It's so much fun. Um, don't think I forgot about the cow, by the way. Uh, what cow? Oh, mm. you you forgot apparently. There's a cow, the calf. Oh no! <laughs> it's I didn't thirsty. forget. Oh, I didn't they're forget. so thirsty. You missed my comment that day when I said, "Tim, I got a cow guy. I can have a cow on your lawn by noon Eastern if you like." <laughs> no, stop with the cows. Uh, and you can check me out. Everything I do is at rarejob.co. But if you want to chat with me, it's came out you want to on Instagram, Kevin Exhibition on Twitter. Uh, and uh, we'll see you next week for episode 120. Man, we were so close to having 120 beat Mandalorian and be off by 14. Damn. Oh, well, 121 for Mando. That's the one to look forward to. We just, oh, well, I mean, like, what if? Nah, we'll figure it out later. We'll see you on the next one. Week off. May the force be with you. <laughs> Always.